Hi, I'm Alistair, and this is part of a series of tutorial videos where I want to show you how to build an animatronic controller. More specifically, I'm going to show you how you can use a radio transmitter like this as a real-time remote input which a puppeteer can use. The signals sent by this will be received and interpreted by an Arduino, and this is going to be running code that will take those inputs and apply behaviour which is going to control a certain number of outputs. Now those outputs are most likely going to be servo motors like these but they could also be uh, stepper motors perhaps or any other output which an Arduino can control so LEDs for example. And then those outputs are going to be used to control mechanisms which could be an eye mechanism like this or perhaps they could be a tentacle arm like this, or any other animatronic mechanism. Now, in this video, to start with, I just want to take a look at how you can set up a radio control transmitter like this as a remote input to an Arduino. Although I'll be looking at this from the example of an animatronic controller, you could actually use this to control any Arduino sketch via a radio control. OK, so I'm using the FSI6 controller made by Flysky and this cost about £35. Um, it comes with a receiver module as well, like this, um, and it's sold for controlling drones or model aeroplanes. Um, I'm also aware that you can get basically this exact same model uh, manufactured and marketed under a couple of different brand names, but they're all basically the same thing. Uh, now, this is a six-channel controller, and it comes with a six-channel receiver as well. So what that means is that there's uh, six independent axes of control that the puppeteer can transmit to the Arduino. Now, some of those are fixed. So on the right-hand side, the joystick here up and down, that's channel one, and left and right, that's channel two. On the uh, left-hand joystick, we also have up and down and left and right for channels 3 and 4. But for channels 5 and 6, you can choose which of these controls over the top are most suitable, depending on the type of model you're trying to control. So we've got um, three switches, which are just on or off. Uh, there's also a switch here, which is a three-way switch, so it has up, middle and down. And we also have two rotary dials in the middle. So depending on the type of model that you're trying to control and the sort of inputs you want to send it, uh, you can choose which of these to assign to channels 5 and 6. Now on the receiver side, uh, this is the module that would normally go inside the model aeroplane or in the drone, um, but it can be powered by 5 volts, exactly the same as an Arduino. And you'll see it has uh, a set of pins over the side here and those pins represent the signal which is received on each of the six channels sent by the transmitter. Now, radio control uh, systems like this use a system called PPM, or Pulse Position Modulation. And what that means is that they send a pulse of a certain duration somewhere in a fixed time frame. And depending whereabouts in the time frame the pulse is sent, it represents a different value. Now, that's a bit complicated, so don't worry about it too much. What it means is that we can read how far each of these channel switches were pushed to the left or right, effectively an analogue value, but we can read it on a digital pin of the Arduino. Um, so we'll do that by connecting each of these pairs of pins here to a unique GPIO pin on the Arduino. Here's the wiring. So the module has uh, three pins for each channel here and they are in order the signal pin here and then a positive pin which is 5 volts and then a negative pin which is ground. Now because the positives and the negatives for each channel are all connected together I've just taken the very top one here and I've wired that to 5 volt on the Arduino and I've taken the top right ground pin and just wired that to ground here as well. So that's going to supply positive and ground for all of the channels. And then what I've done is I've taken the signal pin, so the first pin for each of the channels from 1 to 6, and mapped them to a unique digital input pin on the Arduino here. So I'm using D2 to D7. Now, 
in theory, you could take these to any pin on the Arduino and do a digital read to get the value from this signal pin. Remember that I said that the way that radio control signals are transmitted are with a pulse, which has a particular duration and timing. And what you could do is you could do a uh, digital pin read in a loop function, tell whether the value of these pins was currently high or low, and then start a timer, wait until it changes, and then stop the timer, see how much time had passed, and that would give you your pulse duration. However, that would be uh, really fiddly and messy and prone to error, and actually the timing would not be that accurate. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use um, what's called a pin change interrupt. And this is a more precise way of telling when a pin changes from low to high, so a rising or a falling edge. The only disadvantage of using this method is that the way that the ports on an Arduino are laid out is that they're grouped into certain ports and a pin change interrupt is shared by all pins on a certain port. So I've chosen pins 2 to 7 not just because they're the first available pins and because they're lined up neatly here but also because they all share the same port and therefore I can use a single pin change interrupt request to listen to the signals on all of these pins. So that's a little bit complicated, but essentially if you copy the uh, layout which I've got here exactly, and if there's no other reason why you can't use these pins, I recommend using pins two to seven. It will make your code much easier in the next step. Uh, so let's have a look at the code. So the first thing we do in the code is just put a little define up the top here and that's going to specify the port that we're going to create the pin change interrupt on. Um, now our channels from the receiver module are going into pins 2 to 7 which are all part of this group here so we're going to define ports to use as 3. Now uh, this define value itself, ports to use, this is going to be used by um, a library called the fast RC reader library. Um, you can download that from GitHub here. Um, and this is going to set up a pin change interrupt on uh, the specified group of ports, depending on what's up here. And it's just going to provide some useful wrapper methods for reading the values uh, from each of the pins in those ports as well. Uh, it's not a very big library, it's quite simple and straightforward, but it's, it's just a helper function that's going to make our code a bit easier to read. So you can download that from there. Uh, then we define some constants. Um, we're going to listen to all six channels of the receiver. I mean, you can, if you want, only listen to two input channels if that's all you need, but um, I may as well. I always set it up to listen to all six because you never know when you might want to extend the functionality in the future. And we create an array that's going to specify the pins on the Arduino to which each of the channels from the receiver are plugged into. So this is the channel one signal then channel 2, channel 3, 4, 5 and 6. Uh, then we set up a global variable which is going to be an instance of the fast RC reader class and we'll just call it RC um, that'll make it easy to refer to later on in the code. In the setup function uh, first of all we'll begin a serial connection at 9600 board so we're going to use a serial connection either for um, loading the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE or the serial plotter and that's just going to uh, print out the values that we read from each of the six channels. That's all we're going to do in this code to start with is just to check what values we're reading on each channel. Um, we'll begin the connection to the RC reader and then we also need to tell it what channels we're listening to. So we do that by calling the add channel method here and we'll pass it our array of channel pins from up here and we'll just say that we want to set up six channels so that's using these two constants up here and then in the loop function itself uh, so on each iteration through the loop we're going to loop over all of the input channels so all six input channels and we're going to retrieve the corresponding GPIO pin mapped to that channel. And then we're going to call the rc.getfrec method or get the frequency 
Um, so this is going to return the value that the RC class reads of that pulse that's being received on the corresponding channel pin. Um, so this is going to give us a value between 1000 and 2000 normally for remote control models, but we'll, we'll plot that in a moment and actually confirm those the values we're getting. So we're going to just spit out the value first of all to the serial monitor and then these lines here, this is just a little bit of uh, formatting. So after dumping the value from one channel, we'll put a comma separator in between each of the channels except for the last one. That's what the minus one is there. So we're going to effectively end up with a comma separated list of the values read from all six channels. And then once we've read through all six, we'll insert a new line and go on to the next line. So let me demonstrate how you can read the input values from a radio transmitter. So I've got my Arduino IDE loaded and I'm going to load the serial plotter. Now this is a lot like the serial monitor, but it will actually give me a graph of different values here. So I'm plotting six different channels as a line here. Turn my controller on and you'll see I start to get some values. Now you might not be able to see this very clearly, but this line here, this is a thousand. This one at the top, this is about 1500. Now as I start to move the right hand stick up and down, what you'll see is that the corresponding value in the serial plotter goes between 1000 and 2000. When I move it left and right, I'm getting one of the other values. And on the left hand stick, I can go up and down, left and right. And so those all values move between 1000 and 2000. When they're in the middle, it reads 1500. Now, the other channels 5 and 6 at the moment are mapped to these two rotary switches at the top. So you can see as I twist those, I can make those go up and down. But if you want, you can assign channels 5 and 6 to another switch instead. So on my controller, if you hold down OK, go to Function Setup, AUX Channels. Now at the moment you see it says Channel 5 VRA. Let's change that to make it uh, Switch A instead, which is this one at the top left. And if I make channel 6, uh, switch C, which is a three position switch here. Now as I switch that switch there, notice channel 6 moves between 1000, 1500, 2000. On the left hand side, flicking up and down goes between 1000 and 2000. So now I can move all six channels at once.